you know, it's, it's felt different uh, in uh, whatever we're calling this week, preseason camp, pre-camp. Pre um, but, uh, you know, I've been really positive with uh, with most everything. Today, not not quite, I don't feel quite that way. I feel like we got a lot of work to do. We uh, defense dominated today in, in every every uh, drill we had every aspect and energy um which uh, i think i think we're we're going to be better on that side of the football if we can stay healthy particularly that linebacker we're thin but i think we got a chance to be better aaron pierre's really showing up um the new dbs i'm real pleased with but uh man just left the field today thinking that uh, we didn't get the most out of the opportunity to, to practice uh in particular offensively today Coach, uh, from an injury standpoint, everything, everyone's still okay? Uh, we got a few that, uh, you know, going to have to have some docs look at them. Um, really probably won't comment until I, until I get that. Demario Douglas appears to, he was in a blue jersey today. He's on his way back. CJ Yarbrough seems to be making uh, uh, good strides. Uh, Caleb Coleman's got to got to see the doctor with that shoulder that he's had surgery on him. To see if anything's going on with that. It's giving him problems. Uh, Ari Jenkins has got a, a leg injury that we've got to got to see what happens with that. But um, I think that's it. Hey, Hugh, it's Brian Phillips. Well, hello, Brian. Hey, I have a two part question for you. So. Uh, I know it's still early, but how is uh, Malik Willis progressing from what he was in spring? And the second part is I'm looking for a new driver. Mm -hmm. I know you tend to buy one every you know two weeks or so. Do you recommend one, or are you trying to hold back because you're afraid you know March 9th might happen again where I beat you? Yeah, I'm on. I'm gonna take the driver question first. Number one, just like sometimes in the media, you have your information wrong. You have this one wrong. It's not that I don't try a new driver every two weeks. I don't buy them, though. I just try them until I mm -hmm. kind of decide which ride I want to go. But if I were recommending a driver right now, I would tell you to go get the SIM driver. It's hot. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely not afraid of, of a rematch. As far okay. as Malik. Thank you, sir. And Malik, yeah. Yeah, Malik. Um, Boy, it's just it's moving really fast for him right now, Brian. And uh, we've got uh, today was just uh, it was a lot on he and Chris, not just him. Uh, they look good to play, and then it's moving. Uh, we we this is the first day. I should have expected this, um, but this is the first day that we've gone any kind of tempo. We've tried to with with all the quarantines we've had and all the. Uh, the missed uh, conditioning opportunities that we've had, we've we've gone really methodically and and tried to watch the workload. And today, we really turned it up a little bit on the tempo, and and it uh, it showed that we're not anywhere near ready for that. And there's no no other position that reflects that more than a quarterback because it's so obvious when when they're not uh, understanding kind of what's going on. And today was kind of that day. Um, I'm really excited about he and Chris. I think they both bring something to us, and we've got to see which one can be the most consistent uh, over time in, in operating us efficiently on offense. But, uh, boy, he's scary when he does some things, and his arm strength's phenomenal. It's, uh, it's just we've got to get the game to, to – we've got to get him ready to play really fast, but in his mind uh, feel, feel like it's slowed down. All right, well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Was this sort of like a, a scrimmage today or just a ones versus ones, twos versus twos? I mean, it was just a normal practice, no tackling, just thud. But we had we added we added peers. You know, we went up to 19 peers today. And so we had uh, quite a few more snaps and again started asking them to play at a faster tempo and it just it looked really sloppy on offense. How much can it help your team having a guy like Shadra Lewis back there, you know, a threat to take it back to the house pretty much any time he touches the ball? Yeah, I'm real pleased. I think Shadro and Troy Henderson both give us something there that uh, 
uh, they're they're both dangerous, and uh, if they get a crease, they're they're fast enough to to be a threat to have explosive plays. So, and they both catch the ball very well out of the out of the backfield. So, I think uh, there's definitely going to be some packages where you see those two involved. Didn't get a chance to ask uh, Tanner Burns this yesterday, but how does T uh, Trayon Sibley factor any in any of the return games? We saw him last year against Rutgers when Shadro was hurt. Do you factor him in, in any of the return games and what's a pretty loaded room now in areas that you guys wanted to address? Yeah, he's uh, he's getting reps in kickoff return uh, right now. We haven't uh, done that live, but uh, when we're when we're practicing the kick the the catches on that he's back there so that would be the only one i think punt return is you know Stubbs and shadro or and um demario will all be prepared to do that but uh dale sibley will be in he'll be prepared to do kickoff return also when you look back at today's practice what are the teachable moments that you had from that to help with the offense lord we would be here all day it was every play i had uh just it, it was not good it was uh we, we got a long way to go offensively and um just there's so many teachable moments but it was just moving fast not just for the quarterbacks but for the o-line and the defense was bringing some different odd looks and we turned people loose receivers ran the wrong routes running backs missed protections quarterbacks missed check downs Read the wrong side. It, it was. It's. Uh, we got. We got a lot of film to watch tomorrow. Is it maybe it's, but maybe it's not the best day to ask this. But uh, how, how's your wide receivers? How confident do you feel with those guys, especially after uh, trying to? Re I know you can't really replace an AGG, yeah. but trying to fill in his shoes. I think you once. Uh, I think once CJ Arbor and Demario get back and are healthy. Uh, I think we're going to have a quality wide receiver room. I, that's uh, uh, the concern for me is not uh, the the giftedness of that room. It's just we got to get them all on the same page and learning the system and you know when to convert routes, when not to. And you know, again, this was really day one of us trying to do a lot of that. And so I, I don't. Uh, but it just reminded me, man, we got a lot of coaching to do. But I, I'm confident we can have a good wide receiver room. You mentioned Demario uh, specifically. Is there uh, is there anything? Can you specifically talk to his situation more? Or do you want to wait on that for now until he sees the doctor, like you were saying earlier? Oh, Demario's already. He just had a sprained ankle. He, he okay. he's fine. He's just and uh, he was in blue jersey today. Um, yeah, the, he he's. We expect him back Monday for practice. Okay. And then going forward, you said a lot of film tomorrow. Is there? What what do the next few days look like, and when's that first full practice uh, go day? So we uh, we we tomorrow is is like uh, Tuesday and Thursday of this week, where it's uh, film, film, walk through, and and our strength staff will do either stretching, lifting, or conditioning. I can't remember which one it is on on tomorrow with them. Um, I don't think it's conditioning because we, we pushed them pretty hard today. But um, that's that's what tomorrow will look like. Just catch up and get all the film out of the way. Have another walk through to get prepared for Monday's practice. Sunday will be off um, for everybody to rest, recoup. And then uh, Monday we'll get back after it. I think we'll be up to, uh, uh, let's see, I think Monday we go back to a 17-period practice. But it'll be a pretty physical one. And that's full pads Monday. Uh, you know, we hardly ever go full. If you, it depends on what you call full. I mean, we'll okay. have shoulder pads and, and uh, thigh pads on. Okay. But, but will we be in full uniform? No, but we hardly ever do that. Uh, we'll do that a couple Saturdays. Um, and hopefully our kids are starting to learn how to practice with that equipment on. When you look at uh, how the landscape has changed for college athletics within the last couple of days saw the a sun conference today announced uh, no fall sports doesn't impact football but is it going to be weird to possibly be the only sport taking place on campus this fall candidly uh, damien i hate that uh will it feel different probably not to us because we kind of are in our own world of focused on 
Uh, we re- I don't really don't get around to supporting others like like you want to until basketball season when when we're through. So I don't I don't know that it's going to feel weird. I certainly think it's uh, it's it's unfortunate and you you're hated for those sports and um, and certainly you know we we still don't. You know, I don't know that we're completely out of the woods yet either. We're, we're, you know, nationally football wise, I still think there's hurdles to, you know, we're certainly in the in the camp that is going to continue to get prepared to play. And hopefully that's what happens. But none of us can sit here and look at each other with a straight face and say that we, we know for certain that that's going to happen. So uh, but we're going we're going to prepare like it is and hope that it is. But um you know, you still everybody's got to wait and see what happens when all the students come back to all of these campuses that are that are trying to play like us, and and we all affect each other. And y'all know that it's not just about one school, but uh, there can be a school in the south that has a big issue, and it, it can affect all of us. So it's a, uh, you know, it's still kind of strange times, and and hopefully we get to, but. It won't feel any different if we're fortunate enough to play to us because we just again are kind of in our the grind of a football season. You you don't have a lot of time to focus on anything but that. With the NCAA, you know, limiting in person recruiting now through the end of September. What are your thoughts about early signing period? Hmm. Um, I go back and forth in my mind on that. Um, there's part of me that thinks it can benefit us, and and then obviously there's part of you that feels like, man, have we really gotten to know uh, the young man and his family and seen him enough to make an accurate evaluation? So I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a little of both, and certainly with us missing the camp season and not being able to go see them play this fall, and then going on to sign them in December, we got to really trust our evaluation skills for sure. I meant to ask you this earlier in the week, uh, but Turner Gill uh, returning to Liberty, non-football role and working in uh, diversity. Uh, as someone who has known him for a while, you've played many rounds of golf with him as well. Uh, what do you say about the hire of bringing him in to help with those efforts at the university? And I think, um, you know, Turner first is one of the finest men um, that, that I've been around. And anytime you can add fine people to your institution, I think it's a good thing. And and obviously, with uh, with all the events going on in the world today, to add someone with his character, his strength, his integrity, his his wisdom, in a role uh, to help with uh, diversity here on campus, I think is a huge positive. Did you get a chance to interact with Kelvin Edwards during that hall during the when he got his jersey retired at all? Uh, Kelvin and I had many phone conversations, and I did get to spend. He flew with me uh, to the. Uh, to uh, one of the games when I couldn't travel with the team. I can't remember what game it was, but uh, and we got to spend a lot of time there uh, con- communicating with each other. So I, I know Kelvin uh, fairly well. I know his love for Liberty and, uh, you know, we welcome him also. You got a little outspoken this week on Twitter about, you know, let us play, you know, put the ball down, we'll, we'll play. Um, what is your thoughts and how, how much communication do you have with Ian about the schedule this year? Are you of the mindset of we'll play as many P5 teams as we can if that's what it takes to get a, a full season in? Or, or do you want you know, to try to get as many you know, quote-unquote wins on the schedule to, to ensure bowl eligibility? Uh, both. You know, I'd, I'd like to have it both ways. I talk to Ian daily. Um, we're, we're in constant – communication about the the ever-changing uh, scheduling and um i appreciate him allowing me to have input and we're working together on that uh you you want to give your kids uh, first and foremost if if the season is played uh, we want to ensure that we have a schedule to play uh, so that's the first priority and then if you can do that in a manner that uh, in year two of our journey here to where you give them an opportunity to to be in games that uh that you have a, a chance to win and uh, go to a second straight bowl. Obviously, that is nice. Um, I don't know that we have that luxury this year to just look at a schedule and say, hey, we're going to win that one, that one, that one, that one. I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think there's going to be a lot of very, very difficult, tough football games that we have to play. I, I don't I don't mind that. I'm excited about it. Our staff's excited about it. Our kids will be excited about it. Um, so that's the priority. and. You know, I wish we could 
pick and choose a few. You know, we lost some games that uh, we 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 felt very confident that we matched up really well with, and you know, probably have replaced those with with games that uh, I still think we can compete in, but we could easily win or lose them. So, um, but Ian's done a great job um, with managing relationships and keeping us in the in the talks of of having games. I think the biggest question now is just. You know how many is is it wise to schedule, and um, and when do you really want to start? And I think those are the things that we'll talk about even this afternoon. Yeah, when you look at filling out a schedule, you don't know how many you need to become, how many wins you need to become bowl eligible, because I don't think the FBA has announced like bowl eligibility standards because so many teams are playing so many different number of games. Does that factor in your conversations with him of? how many games you can feasibly play in a year and also get the time off in between to help. So that way, in case there is an outbreak, you guys aren't looking at having a depleted roster for a, for a, for a road trip. Yeah, I think, I think we do have word. I think it's 50% of your games. If you play 10, I think five gets your bow eligible. If you play 12, obviously six, I'm not sure about 11, what that does, but um you know, it's very difficult to manage the second part of your question right now. Um, there's no way to judge when or how much an outbreak would be. And so, I mean, you'd be really dang lucky if, if your outbreak happened right around your open week. But there, there's zero way that we can forecast that. Or um, So you get the schedule to be what it is the best you can. And then you try to keep your kids in the bubble as much as we can. And that's going to be the biggest I think our team is, you know, we, we've gone over two weeks without even having to have a test because uh, no one's screened with any symptoms. We have everyone's out of quarantine. We haven't had a positive in over three weeks. So we're, uh, you know, everything we're blessed right now. Um, having said that, uh, you and I both know that we could be week one of game and our policy is we're going to test on Wednesdays and who knows what could happen with us or the opponent. Um, but we've got to try to manage our kids to stay in a, in our quote bubble of our complex and their living quarters and our training table the way we have it set up because I know it's set up to protect them and they're going to have to sacrifice uh, some other things that, that are normal for a college student. Coach, that said, I mean, you're dealing with over 100 kids that are 18 to 23 years old and what you just said, not having any positives in three weeks, I mean, Maybe just talk a little bit about, could you speak to their their character and just, you know, I mean, is that surprising that they, you've had that, that much success, I guess, keeping them quarantined or in, in the bubble, so to speak? Well, I mean, there's there's no way I can say with 100 percent certainty that uh, that is totally by our self-discipline or by luck or by God's just blessing. I, I, I don't know because I'm not with them all the time. But in the conversations I have with our players, I do think there has definitely been a heightened awareness of accountability. We went through um, in, in July, I think we went through a period of uh, where we weren't really accountable because we didn't really have a great understanding or didn't uh, maybe believe that that it could really happen to us because we had gone so long with really not affecting us here. And we had a spike. And uh, I think from that time on to this point, I do believe our team is has been much more aware of being accountable. Can that continue throughout? I sure hope so. I think for us to have a college football season, I think that's going to be critical at every institution that's trying to play is 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 the just sacrificing and being very self-disciplined uh, with uh, with where you are, who you're around, and taking the proper precautions. We got coordinators waiting here, so we'll take one or two more here for Coach Freeze. You guys have anything? Again, just uh, today, I think you know, offensively, we just weren't uh, we weren't very good, but not not because we can't be. Just um, this is the first day has moved kind of fast, and we haven't uh, we you expect defense to be a little ahead, and um, I, I look forward to. I know our staff will get them caught up and uh, and playing faster, but slowing it down for them mentally some um, as we start uh, to, to counter practice faster. But that was kind of the synopsis of today for me.